Why is hybrid not working? It's a good question, and I'm going to agree with you and disagree with you. For the most part, individuals who are doing the work really appreciate the flexibility if they're given it. And they are super into, you know, working in a way that fits their lives. Charisma doesn't always work. Charisma doesn't come across through this this digital divide. Two years of forced pandemic where we just kind of survived. There was this knee-jerk reaction and companies created tactics and policies around hybrid work. Tactics without a strategy is a little bit like packing your suitcase before you've decided where you're going on vacation. The real Achilles heel for leaders is they don't understand remote work. Hello and welcome to another episode of Team Anywhere. I'm your co-host on the West Coast of California, and our new co-host is Brett Putter, and he's on the West Coast of Portugal. Uh, we've teamed up for uh, this newest breakthrough in Team Anywhere to really give you an understanding and some tools on how to do vi how to do hybrid and virtual work. Today, we're really going to turn it over to Brett to really talk about some of the um, some of the secrets that are kind of under the surface that we're not really picking up in hybrid and that a lot of managers aren't picking up that that to really look at hybrid you you need a new operating system you need a new way to look at this work and unfortunately many managers haven't really picked that up we're going to discover why today so first let's let's just say hey Brett how is it i know you just moved to a new place how are you doing Mitch for all, all things considered i'm doing okay um the next time we do this i won't have the weird curtain background. Um, I won't have my, uh, my my laptop perched on top of a box. Um, I won't <laughs> I won't have thousands of boxes all around me. Um, but uh, no, I'm I'm doing good. Thanks. We're we're in the the thick of of moving home with a four year old and a six year old who as you pack things, want to unpack things, and as you don't want to unpack things, are in unpacking for you. So um, chaos and mayhem, but all good. Uh, we've got to uh, move to a lovely place in a, a little village called Banzao, which is just north of Sintra, uh, which is a little bit north of Lisbon in Portugal. Okay. And um, it, feel, it feels like, it, it, it feels like uh, a, a real picturesque, beautiful little village. So yeah, I'm, I'm, mentally I'm, I'm boxed up, but good. <laughs> Mentally, you're boxed up. Well, great. You know, everybody understands how much work it is to move. Um, and gosh, I have no idea what that's like to do that in Portugal. Uh, today, we're going to be asking uh, critical questions that many uh, chief people officers and other leaders and managers and entrepreneurs are asking. Why, why is hybrid not working? You know, I just saw the latest statistic that there are virtually not that many companies that are virtual. Um, we know that before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and now that pretty much every company has a hybrid mix in it, because we just know that everyone is working, uh, uh, unless you're creating something at a factory, which is great stuff. Um, you're doing some of your work, half of your work, most of your work, not from the office. Why is hybrid work still not working? Um, that's our that's our question. That's our opening question, Brad. So it's a good question, um, and it and I'm going to agree with you and disagree with you. Um, it is working in some cases. It's generally not working. Um, so in the cases that hybrid is working, if you look at individuals, for the most part, individuals who are doing the work really appreciate the flexibility if they're given it, and they appreciate the additional responsibility and the autonomy, and they are super into you know working in a way that fits their lives if they're given that opportunity. So hybrid work really can work. Where it's not working is at the manager, mid-level manager and the senior leadership team. And that there this is there's this is where the disconnect is, is coming from is that a lot of leaders are trying to go back more into the office because they don't know how to lead in this new environment. And a lot of leaders were classically trained office-based leaders. So they used charisma, they used delegation, they used uh, their, their language to, to drive the business forward. And in a remote work environment, it, it, charisma doesn't always work. Charisma doesn't come across through this, this digital divide. So it kind of is, 
in some cases, but it isn't in most cases. And ultimately, it's because leadership don't understand what leadership don't understand, and they don't know what they don't know. So what's missing? Um, it's been, what, three, four years? Yeah. What's missing? There's a lot of young leaders that are coming to the table that really haven't experienced being actually in the office. But what are, what are current leaders missing about hybrid work that the, you know, one would assume they've just picked this up uh, four years down the road? Yeah, so, so it's, it's two years of forced pandemic where we just kind of, kind of survived. And then two years of, okay, now let's try and work it out. And actually the try and work it out hasn't worked because what happened is there was this knee-jerk reaction and companies created tactics and policies around hybrid work. So they decided how many days or where you could be or salaries or whatever. But actually tactics without a strategy is a little bit like packing your suitcase before you've decided where you're going on vacation. You're not going to need the snow boots on Ipanema Beach in Brazil unless you're going for a fancy dress. So really what we have is we have a lack of strategy, which means we don't have a plan, which means we can't optimize hybrid work. And the reason why we have a lack of strategy is because the real Achilles heel for leaders is they don't understand remote work. We know how to work in an office and we got pretty good at it. But leaders have not experienced what remote work is when it is designed in. In other words, most leaders have not worked in a company where remote work was designed in from the beginning. They don't know what these best practices are. They don't know how work is done differently in a remote work environment. So where are the, um, so it's obvious that the managers don't know um, what a remote environment, how, how work should be done in a remote environment, but where's, um, where are they struggling the most, you know, that you've been able to see through your research? So what you can see in these companies is what I call hybrid work friction and hybrid work friction is the, the gap between how you would work in ideal conditions if you're in the office five days a week and how your team is working now. And so to give you an example, um, uh, Jack is working on a project. He needs some information. If he was in the office, he would pop over to Mary's desk and say, hi, Mary, I need this information. And she'd say, okay, I'll get it over to you now. But actually, he can't do that now because they're not in the office together. And so he has to reach out to Mary. Mary's busy. Jack has to wait. Jack is frustrated. Jack can't move his project forward. So he goes and looks at the database. He looks at all the folders. There are three or four different versions of the same document. And this is the friction that's happening in every business hundreds, if not thousands of times. And it is slowly, it's sort of death by a thousand cuts because it's slowly but surely driving engagement down. It's driving motivation down. And so if you look at where the friction is happening in your organization, you will understand where the remote work challenges happen. When you say the friction, what do you mean by the friction? So the, the, the friction is, is the, that that's difference between popping over and asking Mary. And now I've got to go and, okay, uh, Mary, I, I actually don't know what, I don't know what uh, Mary's calendar is. I look at her calendar. I see that the only spot available for me to have a, a call with her is in three days time. Mm -hmm. And so, so what, what should have happened in a, in a well-run remote work environment is Mary would have documented this information. It would, it would be, there would only be one document available with up-to-date information about this, this, this particular project. And so, Jack could go and look at, look, at, look at the folders, find the document, access it, and com continue his work. So what would have happened is in an office is I would have gone, Jack would have gone to Mary and said, can you help me? But in a well-run remote organization, it's documented. It's easily accessible to everybody. And the decision that was made was shared transparently across the organization. Then there is no friction. So it's, it's almost like you're talking about a strategy from the very beginning <clears throat> You, you've designed you've designed the organization from the very beginning, so you're you're um, ba you're basically sharing you know this is how we communicate, this is how we because because I know that when I'm I'm working with a client and I want to have a meeting with that client, I, I go to the calendar and I can't find an open space, and it's really frustrating. And that's the, the imagine how many times that's happening inside a business, and actually the difference is 
when, when we have a meeting, it requires availability and presence. So I can't actually be working. I can't be doing the job I've got to do because I've actually got to have a meeting with you to find out the information that really you should have documented for me already. So instead of spending that five minutes of documenting, it's going to take half an hour of a meeting and it's going to make me wait two or three days. So when I, when I, um, in 20, 2019, I, I, I just finished work with Hotjar and they were a remote, a fully remote company. And I was blown away by their culture, surprisingly. And I, I, I was decided to, to do some research into these remote work companies. And I found that they have best practices that they've developed to overcome the challenge of not being in an office, of not having the osmosis and the physical proximity. So what? So even if they weren't designed from the outset properly, they worked out over time where their challenges were and they overcame them through being better at process definition or documentation or finding that balance between synchronous and asynchronous communication. These are the, these, are these best practices. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, you, you mentioned the, the, just a few minutes ago that this is more than just tactics. It's, uh, it's a rework of thought around it. And as I'm listening, I'm thinking, if I were a listener to the show, you know, wait a minute, I've, I've gone through this. I, I get this. I, this is, you know, I'm, I've, I've adapted to hybrid work. And yet, as, as the example that you're giving me, you know, I work with so many companies, they're still not there. One of the other things I'm thinking about, Brett, is in the in the uh, in the IRL in the real world, where we let's say we all work together. What's very interesting is you, know, you always hear that most meetings don't go well, and I don't want to have a podcast about meetings right now. What I want to what I want to kind of explore with you is that most managers don't know how to prepare for a meeting, and so those meetings uh, don't really go well, and it's a heavy lift. In fact, when I worked at when I worked at Nokia, there was a gentleman uh, Simon who said he would buy a a keg for anybody who would actually run a meeting where the agenda came out ahead of time, where they started on time, where they had action items, and they all left the meeting understand what the action items were before the meeting was supposed to end. And he never had to buy a keg. What he actually did was open up a pub here in <laughs> San Diego. So he just really wanted to get that keg out. This is a true story. So my question is the, um, that's a lot of preparation and thought for the, let's say that person who wants to meet with Mary. So I'm going to meet with Mary. I've got my hybrid hat on and I, this is just to, an information flow, but you're expecting me to think about the documentation that I would need to get it to Mary before, but before the time that we're supposed to meet. And we have to expect that Mary is going to look at that document and perhaps how do you make that culture shift? Because that's a lot. That's a heavy lift. I almost want to say, you know what? It's too much. I'm just going to go back to the way it was before. So what's your response to that, Brett? It's got to start at the top. So once you've defined what the rules are, the leaders, the CEO and her senior executive team have to play by those rules. Um, and if they don't, then nothing will change. But actually, if, for example, you say uh, no meetings will take place in our organization if they're if, without an agenda mm -hmm. and without expected outcomes and without this and this and this, then then and the, and the, the CEO sticks to that with the VP of sales, with the CMO, with the other people, then that's when it becomes part of the new ritual, the new habit. I, one of the so one of the companies I studied, and I, I make mention of this in in the, the hybrid management training program uh, that 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 I've developed is um, the, the one of the best remote work meeting systems that I've seen was the each meeting would start with an agenda document where where the the owner of the meeting would write down the agenda, um, the purpose of the meeting who was coming to the meeting and why not just the cto but why the cto was going to be there and then would write on that document the situation for the meeting and the questions they had and this was a week before the meeting and the cto the vp of sales or whoever else was in, in, invited to that meeting 
were expected to respond on the document before the meeting. Okay, and that's so, that's a lot. That's a lot. Well, it is and it isn't though, because because if you're if you're working in an asynchronous mindset and you're working you're working in that way, you can pop in, think about it, answer the question, go back to the other work you're doing, and and so it's it's a it's a lot. But then often the meeting didn't happen. The meeting was solved before the the, the problem was solved or the situation was was was, was understood before the meeting even happened. So instead of having four senior executives talking for 45 minutes and using all of that time, they could find time in their day to respond, either move closer to a solution or move closer to understanding a solution and having shorter meetings. So it, but the, the, difference, the difference is it's a lot, but it's a lot of waste of time if you don't. So it's a lot right. or a lot. There's no easy solution. There's a lazy right. solution. Yeah. But there isn't an easy solution. Hey, we're taking a quick break to remind you to support our podcast by hitting the subscribe button and leaving us a review. Your feedback means the world to us, and it helps us continue to bring you more engaging and thought-provoking content for leadership and remote work. What would you, what would, if you would call the lazy, if you would give the, a name to the lazy solution, what is the lazy solution called? Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to go with uh, the painful meeting, I guess, the, okay. the, the useless, the, the the I, I actually the, the lazy the lazy meeting for me is 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 the is really what most meetings are. Yeah, we we call them medi medi mediocrity. That's what we call it. It's mediocrity. <laughs> yeah. So so okay. So you know, I'm I'm listening to you, and uh, I know we we were we met on um, when I had you on my podcast a couple of years ago. Uh, and one of the things that have always um, has intrigued me is the name of your company is Culture Gene. And your focus is on hybrid and remote. And um, when I think of, and I, this is a I'm trying to think of a branding or something. When I when I think of hybrid and remote, I think of solutions for hybrid. I think of solutions for for remote. I don't think of culture. Now, obviously, you do. So your 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 company name is Culture Gene. Your focus is on hybrid and remote. So. Tell us, um, tell us, what are you focusing on, and how is this hybrid virtual thing all about culture? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, our USP is exactly what you're talking about. So, there, I, I don't know if there's anybody else like me and like our company. There's no one like you, company. Brad. Thank you for that. Thanks. <laughs> But it, it, so, so the, the, I don't think there's anybody, any other company that, that ha combines a deep understanding of organizational culture with a deep understanding of remote work and remote work best practices. And that's ultimately what we, what we deliver. And you know, so, so the one thing that's missing is hybrid work strategy, and it's missing because people do not understand remote work, but we know how how correlated and how closely linked strategy and culture are. So if you go and create a hybrid work strategy, but you don't adapt the culture to drive that strategy forward, you, you culture will eat that strategy for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So these things actually the, in the best, in the best scenario, your culture and strategy reinforce one another. So in, when we work with our clients, um, we, 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 what we aim to do is give them a consistent method of hybrid or remote work delivery. Combined, Say that again. That's we give. Okay, we give. This is good. We give our clients what? We give our. So I'm just going to talk about hybrid. But when I say yeah. hybrid, I mean both hybrid and remote. So mm -hmm. we give our clients a consistent method of hybrid work delivery across the organization. Wow. Combined with a consistent hybrid work culture no matter where anybody works. It's the consistency that's missing that actually the office was the environment where, which gave us our consistency. And now the office is gone or the office is less effective. So we need to be intentional about that consistency of hybrid work delivery and hybrid culture. I, um, you know, it's interesting, you know, as a coach, people ask me what I do and I say, you know, I, I help people coordinate action so they can get the results that they that they want. 
And usually people go, oh, coordinated action. Yeah, that's exactly what, what's missing with, like, with our company. When you say a consistent method of hybrid work delivery, that's exactly what every company wants. They want a consistent method where work is delivered, or they want a, um, a consistent method of, of a hybrid culture. So now I'm starting to see what that's all about. And, and, and also a question, which is we've had hybrid, you know, even before COVID were you, were you actually delivering solutions uh, before COVID for a consistent hybrid work delivery, or is this, um, what you've discovered more since uh, the pandemic? It's it's more since the pandemic because we did have some hybrid pre-pandemic, but it mm -hmm. was hybrid delivered in an office first culture. I see. Okay. Okay. So 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 the behavior was still as if we were in the office five okay. days a week, even if we weren't. But now people are still being managed as if they're in the office five days a week, but they aren't. People are being managed. As if in, they're in the office five days a week, but they're not. Correct. So managers have not changed how they manage. They have not adapted very much. Can I, can I challenge you on that? Sure. A new manager who, uh, let's say he's or she's in her 20s, who hasn't actually ever been in an office, what does is, what is the research, research find? Does that new manager... Um, manage like before the pandemic, just because that's kind of in the, in the air or, um, because the manager has, um, has only managed in a remote environment for some reason, that person isn't, let's say, um, uh, um, what do I want to say, um, have the disease of in, in office management. Is there, I'm just trying to figure out, cause usually what happens is things carry over even though we didn't want them to carry over. Yeah, from, from what I can see, new managers do adapt to, uh, they, don't, they don't have the learnings from mm -hmm. the past that they have to unlearn. However, managers do not operate in a bubble. So the system will still make them, so, so, the, so in comparison to a, a, an excellent remote work manager, they will still be an office-based manager. They, they will not, their manager will, will not be teaching them how to be a great remote work manager. Okay. So let's, let's, um, um, before we close the show, I really want to understand what your program is. So what, what does culture gene come up with and how does it help today's CEOs and managers and entrepreneurs? So we have built this hybrid management training program and a remote first management training program. And what this does is it basically aligns the leadership and managers on a single strategy and plan around hybrid work. And it does that through workshops and training. The focus really is on the manager, the, the, the people manager, where we've built a, um, a two and a half hour, 25 lesson video training, uh, virtual training course. Uh, where each lesson has an exercise and this takes the manager through the challenges, overcoming the challenges of remote work. So it helps them understand what it means to be a good remote work manager. It helps them understand how to build a team culture because culture is now happening at the team level. It helps them understand how to be, how to work effectively with their people in a remote work environment and it helps them become better at collaboration. And so we cover collaboration, people management and culture because these are the three areas that managers have really been put under stress because of, of hybrid work. And it's a bigger program where we take, it's, it's, we take the managers along a journey, we take the mid-level leadership along a journey and we work with the senior leadership team to make sure that there is that alignment, consistency, and there is that plan. In place. Great. I want to dive into the whole program, but we're not going to do that today. Um, that's what we're going to, that's what we're really going to talk about um, as we move forward with Team Anywhere. Um, having said that, what, um, what is the actually, biggest actually, challenge? Can, can, yeah. can I, 
while, it's our we're, show. while we're while we're not ending the show right we're not ending I, the show yeah let's 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 uh, part two <laughs> yeah. can i can i ask you when i say, when 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 i say that that managers have not been trained and are not um uh uh, they, 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 they don't have the tools and the experience and the knowledge to lead a team. How, what is, what actually, what, what, what triggers do you, what goes on through your head in relation to your course and, 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 and what you're doing from the bottom up? How, do, how does that, how do you, what, what, what comes into your head when I, when I say something like that? Well, what, what comes into my head is, is that, Yes, leadership um, hasn't been trained in how to um, deploy a culture in a hybrid environment because I see it all the time. Uh, and, and I just remember, you know, we started this show and you were at the beginning of the show because all my clients did not know what to do. And we were taking a lot of stuff, actually, Brett, that you, that you taught us um, and we were deploying it um, into the culture. And even, you know, you had you had turned us on to GitLab and all the work that they were doing. So what was happening was we were seeing in this company that I'm working with, which is Host Healthcare, which is, uh, you know, has engagement scores through the roof. Um, we saw the, the leaders turn to say, okay, so this is a virtual first company. We need to now completely throw away the old strategy and create a new strategy, even though we don't even know what virtual first means. So, Absolutely. We, um, we worked as, as well as we could. I was not training the leaders and managers for, for that. I was really working with the executive team. And what I was seeing was, yes, you can definitely get a good manager set in. And there will be those companies. And what was happening with hosts is they went from 200 to 300 to 400 to 500 to 600, almost hitting 700, where we just didn't, we didn't have the capacity and the speed to train all the managers as, as quickly as we wanted to, we also had to, to get in there and train the bottom up. So we created a course, um, which we called Excel as a remote team member, which is now called inspired teams. Why? Because it's incumbent upon every person on a team. And what we saw were we had people on several different teams because it's nobody works on only one team anymore. That's those, those days are gone. We had to give them the, let's say, cultural skills, the collaboration skills, but more was the responsibility, just a, just an insight. And we keep on hearing it over and over and over when we, uh, we just finished a class this Monday is this was Ismail Cherry. He's like, what I got from this class was it's my responsibility because I'm a hybrid or virtual worker to make sure that this team is successful and you can't. You can't, well, you can train a manager to create that mindset. Don't know if he or she will be completely successful. What I think is as important is that you have the bottom up training at the employee level to go, oh my gosh, yeah, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. All these things that I never would have had to think about when I go into the office. Or when I'm, or, or to think about, I'm in the office maybe sometime, but I'm not in the office the other time. What, you know, how can I be the master of the team's domain? Not the master of my domain. That's important, but the master of the team's domain. And so that's when we started to uh, put together this course from the bottom up. Now, sometimes um, uh, I, you know, I think we're both strategists. And I think we are. Um, and sometimes you don't, you know, I don't even see what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, what I'm seeing though, is I think we were, we were hitting the same solution. So I'm going to say that I'm unique, um, in, in, uh, in creating a program that we've launched to a lot of companies where it's a bottoms up. And again, it's something that you can access online where people can, you know, have that shift in a mindset. And then as you're talking about, you're talking about collaboration, people management and culture. So yeah, this is how I collaborate. Uh, this is how I manage myself and my my, my team, because even though you don't have a title of manager, you need to manage, you need to manage yeah, yourself think, and you need to manage. I think this is, this is super powerful because ultimately the, yes, 
we're coming in, coming in at the leader and the manager level, yeah. and that's that's valuable. But actually, if if, if you you and this is why we started, right? You know, co-hosting because Collab, ultimately, yes. if if you pull if if you put, if you put these two things together, you're you're gonna you're gonna really position your organization in this remote environment because the because remote managers, the best remote managers that I've studied in many, many remote organizations are not like the managers of, of, of yesterday. They are facilitating, they are coaching, they are creating the environment for you, the responsible individual to yes. do your work and yes. be part of the team. And so I, I actually think they, 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 they vital together the, 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 you know, these, these two pieces of the puzzle. I don't think I don't think it's a manager's a manager's job to to inform the individuals in the, in the way that you are. So I think that you know that's why we we brought these two pieces together because they're incredibly powerful as a as as a combined uh, entity. Yeah, I I really do think that in and you and we agree that um, in this new world, hybrid, virtual. Let's say you go into the office four days a week, but one day you're not, or three or two, whatever it might be, or Tuesdays or Thursdays or Wednesday mornings. At the end of the day, there's been a huge shift in um, the role of the worker and the liberation of the worker and the um, self ownership and responsibility. And I think what's happening is your course and my course are tipping the scales of people um, seeing themselves as more empowered and. And I think that the, the culture you know, needs to address that right now. So I'm really excited about where we're going to go with these conversations, because you know the you know what I'm throwing out there to the listeners is we're going to tackle real issues and give solutions for those real issues. In as you're saying, how to collaborate, how to uh, create a culture, how to manage people, and how to manage yourself. Um, we're going to give tools. We're going to have solutions. We're going to you know share. I know you do a lot of, a lot of research to give people um, those. So I want to thank you for, uh, you know, kicking this off from the top down and uh, look forward to these conversations in the future. Likewise, which I'm, I'm super excited about it. I think we can uh, really add a lot of value to the audience and uh, you know, supply solutions for them to action and, and, and take away. Great. All right. So thank you, Brett. Thank you to our listeners. Thank you um, to uh, everyone who's really kept in touch with this show. Please share this episode to your friends, your families, your colleagues, people in your community. We'll see you next time on the next episode with Brett and Mitch of Team Anywhere. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more engaging content from our podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share the video with your friends so they can join the conversation too.